The year is 1938. Life in France is great, but the bazillions of dollars from their victory against Germany still pouring in, it was party time for the French. Hey, are you sure Germany's cool with this? Like, that's a lot of money we have taken from them. Won't they get mad or something? What? After that ass whooping we gave them? Nah. And just the next year, Germany got mad. Like, let's take over France type mad. With mainland France down, Japan moves in on French colonies. The main one for this video is this one here. Indochina had been conquered by France in 1887, and when Japan invaded it in 1940, they were a little pissed. Then, some stuff happened, and Germany surrendered, followed by some more stuff, causing Japan to surrender. Now what happens to Indochina? Oops, that works, I guess. So what happened there? Ho Chi Minh led the Viet Minh, a communist army that fought and revolted against the Japanese invaders. After the surrender of Japan, the Viet Minh were like, Hey, we're just, we're just gonna leave now, okay? Yep, okay, bye. Then they remembered they had French colonists, but they didn't give in so easily. The first Indochina war lasted from 1946 to 1954, just in time for the US to get bored and declare a very well refrigerated war on the Soviet Union. Neither side wanted an all out war with each other because of, well, so both sides started funding smaller wars across the globe. The Soviets wanted to expand communism, while the US funded anti-communist regimes. In the first Indochina war, the US and Great Britain funded the French, while the Soviets and now communist China funded the Viet Minh. While the war still raged on in 1953, sitting President Eisenhower really didn't want young Americans to fight in Korea then go right back to war in Vietnam. In 1954, the Viet Minh eventually won and the country was split into the Democratic Republic of Vietnam and the State of Vietnam. Cambodia and Laos were also given their independence. A referendum was then held where the majority of people voted for a republic. This made it so that the South was now independent and turned into the Republic of Vietnam. The North really didn't like this and this is finally what flung us into the Second Indochina War, or more commonly known as... The US saw this as a big no-no, as they thought that if Vietnam fell to communism, would Laos be next? Cambodia? In the North, a whole bunch of communist supporting groups got together to form the NLF also known as the Viet Cong. With the US taking loss after loss after loss in the Cold War, sitting President John F. Kennedy was still pondering on sending young Americans to Vietnam, but it was getting clearer and clearer that America saw Vietnam as their saving grace to show the Soviets that they were not six feet under yet. For now, the US just sent more equipment and military advisors to help control the situation, but neither the gear or the advisors were ready for the brutal warfare known as guerrilla warfare going on in Vietnam. They suffered ridiculous defeat after ridiculous defeat. Then even worse news came that year when the South Vietnamese coup was staged overseeing the murder of the president. This helped the North strengthen their grip around the southern population. Finally, in 1964, stuff started going their way again. The US trained up South units to send out counter raids in the North, and in the Gulf of Tonkin incident, fighting broke out between the North's Navy and a US ship. The US won the battle, but President Johnson saw this as an opportunity to enhance their support of South Vietnam. While the South Army was still getting pummeled by the Viet Cong in 1965, Johnson finally ordered an airstrike over North Vietnam. Then, on March 8, 1965, on the back of a few political excuses, 3,500 US Marines landed in South Vietnam. After Laos fell into civil war, again, communist versus non-communist, the US saw this as an opportunity to bomb the area and try to suffocate Viet Cong access to the Ho Chi Minh Trail, the main supply line for the North. The attempt failed. In better news for the US, by the end of 1965, 200,000 American troops were placed in Vietnam. The US Army was there to defend South Vietnam, attempting to keep US involvement to a minimum. But US troops were dying and fighting just to hold a border so far from home that morale was getting low. One General William Westmoreland realized this and decided it was time to go on the attack.